Good afternoon everybody and thank you for joining us for this short all faith service of memorial. It's my privilege as president of NCI to welcome you all to this service and I hope that you will feel the genuine support and closeness of our college community as we take this opportunity to remember those whom we have lost in the past year. None of us would have imagined that this global pandemic would have continued this long. But I can assure you that today's online service, led by the chair of our governing body, Father Leonard Maloney SJ, is genuinely meant to support both staff and students here in NCI. We hope that you will find this a moment of both reflection and comfort. And I want to thank you all for participating. And also, I want to thank everyone involved in making this service of memorial possible. Thank you, Gina, and I add my own words of welcome to you all to this memorial service in which the National College of Ireland gives thanks for those who have gone ahead of us. We will be praying, may they rest in peace. In doing so, we remember all associated with the college, with each one of us, going back indeed to the founding of the college as the College of Industrial Relations in the 1950s, out in Ranelagh. This service, happily now an annual event, takes place in a spirit of gratitude. We owe them so much. This service, as last year's, takes place in the midst of the COVID pandemic, a time when we accept that death cannot be exiled to the outskirts of existence, as a writer in The Guardian put it earlier this week. The idea of being in total control vanishes. As the Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, now living in the US, in her recent Notes on Grief put it, she was talking of her own dad's unexpected death in the middle of 2020 as being like a vicious uprooting. The subsequent experience of grief was for her a cruel kind of education. The news of her dad's death came as a great shock to her. It was as if the air, in her own words, turned to glue. Today, therefore, we remember most especially those amongst us who grieve deeply. At this time of year, this grief can be greatly intensified through the season of wonder and awe and amazement that is meant to be Advent as we prepare for Christmas and all that goes with that. In this service, we say to those who mourn, we are with you. The Gospel reading of Mary of Magdala's encounter with the risen Lord is chosen specifically. She meets him in confusion in the garden near where he had been buried. While we can safely presume, I think, that Jesus would first have visited his own mother. Nonetheless, here we come across the first recorded encounter of a living person with the risen Lord. And he calls her by her name, as he called each of those whom we remember, and as he calls each of us each moment of each day by our own name. 
in Mary of Magdala's encounter, the first such with the risen Lord, we recognize that death is not the end. There is hope. That hope, in the words of St. Paul, will not be disappointed. We are, each of us, chosen and called by name. Clearly, I'm speaking out of my own Jesuit, Catholic, Christian background, but I hope to speak to all here of Christian and other traditions, believer and non-believer. The aged Czech theologian, Monsignor Tomáš Halik, puts it succinctly and mysteriously. God happens when we love people, our neighbours. Love of our neighbour is a possibility that is open to all of us. Of course, we are all related. We are all brothers and sisters with the shared responsibility for the future of the planet and for all our neighbours, in particular those who are in great need. Today, specifically and obviously, we remember those who have died, with the names of all of those being listed later as a part of this ceremony. I mentioned but a few to focus our attention. We think of Maeve Call, student, of our Vice President, Jimmy Hill's mom and dad, who died so soon after one another, Joe and Dolly. We remember Jerry Quinn, husband of Dr. Danielle McCartan Quinn, Vice Dean in the School of Business. The brother of our former president, Joyce O'Connor, Sean. We take time here in this service to remember all of those who have died and to whom this wonderful college owes a great debt of gratitude. At such a service, we remind ourselves that there are those amongst us who have lost a piece of their heart Indeed, as the late Jesuit theologian Karl Rahner put it, all of their heart. Denise Levertov was a poet, Welsh by birth, but most of her, certainly her adult life in the United States, speaks, us all, speaks to all of us in a short, simple poem. I don't know the background. She dedicates it to B and H, F, friends. It's called At David's Grave. There's something very consoling about it for all of us. At David's Grave. Yes, here he is in this open field in sunlight among the few trees set out to modify the bare facts. He's here, but only because we are here. When we go, he goes with us to be your hands that never do violence, your eyes that wonder, your lives that daily praise life by living it, by laughter. He is never alone here, never cold in the field of graves. Never cold in the field of graves. We remember them. As Mary of Magdala, let our lives be upended with a new and hopeful certainty that he is risen. It was very early on the first day of the week and still dark when Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw that the stone had been moved away from the tomb and came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. 
They've taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said, and we don't know where they have put him. Later on, Mary was standing outside near the tomb, weeping. Then, as she wept, she stooped to look inside and saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head, the other at the feet. They said, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken my Lord away, she replied, and I don't know where they have put him. As she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, though she did not realize it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and remove him. Jesus said, Mary. She turned round then and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means master. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go and find my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. So Mary of Magdala told the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. Praying by Mary Oliver. It doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into tanks and a silence in which another voice may speak. May all beings be happy and create the causes of happiness. May they all be free from suffering. May they attain that sacred happiness. 
which can never be tainted by suffering. May they experience universal, impartial compassion free of attachment. Death is Nothing at All by Henry Scott Holland. Call me by my all familiar name. Speak to me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no forced air of somnolency or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile and think of me. Pray for me. Let my name ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effect, without the trace of a shadow on it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same that it ever was. There is absolute unbroken continuity why it should I be out of mind, because I am out of sight.